Hey guys. So, um, I just had a miscarriage and I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to tell my story because I know it helped me to hear other women's stories. And after my miscarriage, I posted a little bit about it on Facebook on my page and my Instagram and TikTok, you know, just, just to kind of let everyone know what's been going on. Um, and I had already filmed one of my short videos about a nursery transformation where you could see that I was pregnant and I was going to use that as part of my announcement to all of you. And before I posted it, we found out that we lost our baby. And instead of going through and refilming, um, I just decided to tell you all the truth and open up about what happened. But first, I really do need to say, I am not a doctor. I am not giving any sort of medical advice. And, and just because, you know, I tell you about certain things I experienced and eventually ended up having a miscarriage, everybody is so different. And just because something happened to me doesn't mean that it's going to happen to you. But if you do find yourself in the same situation as me, then I really hope this video helps you. So, here we go. Um, honestly, going through my first trimester, I made it to almost the end of the first trimester. And uh, that whole time, I knew something was off. Um, I know that I can say it, <laughs> that like, oh, I knew something was wrong, and maybe I didn't, but honestly, looking back, I really, really did see some signs, and it made me nervous. I had such high anxiety the whole, the whole time, because things were different than they were with my first pregnancy, and people say that every pregnancy can be different, and that is so true, but... This was just weird different. I did go through YouTube and I watched someone else's story. And honestly, it helped so much. I had no, I, I did not know that I was going to end up in a miscarriage. Um, it was just a fear at one point. But watching her and hearing her story really did help me come to terms with the possibility that it could happen. Um, and once it did happen, I think it really helped me process my own experience because I knew that someone else had gone through it too. Um, you know, when I posted on Facebook about, about our loss, so many people ended up being so supportive and commented their own experiences and said how sorry they were for our loss and I appreciated that so much. I really did. If you made a comment, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I read every single one of them and I go back through just to make sure that there's not one that I missed because I really, really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. You know, it really helps me feel understood knowing that there are so many of you out there who've experienced the same or something similar, you know, in your own way. So just to start from the beginning, um, when I ended up pregnant, we actually found out when my husband and I got home from a vacation. Uh, the night that we got home, I took a test and it was positive and I was so excited. Like I watched the first response. I was like, I could see the line and I was like, oh my gosh, like, holy crap. So it was really, really nice. My husband was like, oh shoot, like we got pregnant so quickly. He wasn't expecting that, but we were, we were both very excited. And, um, you know, I was only four weeks at that point, like just missed the period. And I was so excited to find out the gender because these days you can find out so early we found out with our with our first son at um, like seven to eight weeks because you can do a blood test through the brand Sneak Peek. Uh, that's what we did, and so we decided to do it again. But here's the kicker. <laughs> One of the first things that kind of told me something was off was I took the test, 
and you can do it as early as six weeks now. So I took the test at six weeks and it came back inconclusive. Um, and the reason for the inconclusive result was that they said that there was not enough or no fetal DNA in my blood, which can happen, um, you know, maybe sometimes. Then you, the DNA is just not there yet. Um, you know, it happens. So they sent me a retest kit and I did it again. <laughs> and it came back inconclusive again. And I was irritated, <laughs> to say the least. So I got another test and they refund your money if there's no result. Um, so that was nice. It's not like I was buying a bunch of tests. But I took it a third time. And can you guess? It came back inconclusive again. By that point, I was like eight weeks pregnant. Um, and I was like, this should not be happening. So I took it one more time. And it came back as a boy. So that gave me a little bit of relief that it, you know, finally came back. But looking, looking back on this situation, I, I know that the baby was probably struggling, um, you know, struggling to develop. And when I went in for my first ultrasound, since I was on fertility medication, I went in for a viability scan to make sure that everything was okay, that, you know, there was only one in there because sometimes you can end up with multiples if you're on fertility help. And I went in for my ultrasound at six weeks. And so we should have been able to see the little baby. But um, even though it was six weeks, the ultrasound only showed uh, the sac and the yolk sac. There was no baby visible. That didn't mean that there wasn't a baby, it just means that we were a little bit too early. And I was like, okay, that's weird. Um, I'm six weeks, like I was spot on. I knew exactly when I ovulated, when everything was happening. I had like a, you know, a progesterone test to make sure that I ovulated on time successfully. And I was like, okay, this is weird. It made me nervous. But when I went back in at seven weeks, there was a heartbeat, baby was wiggling, and he, he was okay. I knew that. I saw that he was okay. But even though I was seven weeks, he was developed to six weeks. So he was a little bit behind schedule, and you know, sometimes that happens. My doctor reassured me. She was like, you know, if you ovulated a few days late, which you know, could have happened. Um, sometimes it can throw things off. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I'll trust you guys. His heartbeat was 120. And I thought it was a little weird because I, and I asked, is that a little low for a baby at this stage? And the tech said, no, it's in the normal range. They can speed up, you know, it can, it'll be fine. And I, thought back to my son at this stage because I had ultrasounds at the exact same times. Literally, first ultrasound I went in for with my son, we couldn't see him either. And then the next one, I went in at seven weeks and he was perfect, you know, but he was on track. So my seven week ultrasound, he looked seven weeks for his size. And his heartbeat at that time was like 155. So it was a little alarming to me that their heartbeats were in a different range because I feel like 35, a difference of 35 seems like a lot, but you know what? I'm not an OB, I'm not a nurse. I'm, I'm not in that field, so I really don't know. But I trusted what they said, everything was fine, and we just kept going. A couple weeks later, um, I, I don't know if I was just super bloated or if my belly really was starting to pop, but it did. Like I had to break out my maternity pants at nine weeks. And you know, sometimes people start showing really early. Uh, I started showing with my son, my first pregnancy at 12 weeks. So being that this was my second pregnancy and I was popping a little bit at like nine or 10 weeks, it wasn't completely unheard of, you know? So I just thought, okay, this is a good sign. My belly's growing. And then I went in 
for my next visit at, I was technically 11 weeks, and I sat up on the table, did all the checks, you know, um, she pulled out the Doppler, and she was trying really hard to find his heartbeat, but there was nothing there. And I was like, you know, I have a tilted uterus. Um, sometimes these things are weird. And she was like, yeah, we'll just have to do the ultrasound like we planned. So I was like, okay. Went in for the ultrasound. And I was laying there talking to the tech. And there was a student as well in the room. We were just chatting about things, joking around while she was looking through. And I saw the sack. And it was like black, completely black. And I was like, is there anything in there? And she hovered over and then we finally saw him and I didn't see him moving. And I said, is he okay? And she just said, no, I'm so sorry. And like, you know when people say that they can feel their heart sink? That's what happened. I just like, I was laying down and I just felt like my body, like tense, like my entire body just tensed and my heart like fell. And it was like my soul was just like being like pulled out of my body. And I just like, I just, I can't like shake that feeling. And oh my gosh, it was like, like I just sat there and I was like, I just, I've always heard of this happening to other people and like this isn't happening to me right now. Like, no. Like I'm not going through this. Like I can't. I can't. So she asked if I wanted a picture and I said yes because I figured it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And she asked if I wanted to be able to see like his size um, and he measured up to seven weeks. So that's when he stopped growing and it was classified as a missed miscarriage. It's where baby passed away and my body did not register that. So my hormones kept going. I definitely felt pregnant, <laughs> definitely looked pregnant, but baby wasn't going anywhere. So they, she stopped the ultrasound and um, I went back into the bathroom to put my clothes back on and she told me to take all the time I needed and I sat down on the toilet and you know, cleaned myself up and I started to cry. And I was like, nope, I'm not doing this right now. Like I pulled myself together, walked out of the room and she walked me to the next room where the midwife would come and sit with me. And I sat down on the couch and I just looked at my baby's ultrasound and I cried. I was alone and I texted my husband and I was like, babe, there was no heartbeat. He's gone. I think those are literally the exact words I said. And like, I didn't know what else to tell him because um, I told him I would text him with whatever was going on and tell him how the baby was doing. So he was expecting something anyway. And thankfully my husband works literally <laughs> like across the street from the hospital. And he got there within minutes and just hugged me. And we cried together and we looked at his ultrasound and we just had it sitting there and, and we just sat there together. Both kind of in shock of what was happening. The fact that it was happening to us. Um, and then the midwife came in and gave us our options. And she said that I could wait and pass it naturally, but at this point, it had already been like a month since our baby had passed away and my body wasn't doing anything. And she gave us the option to take a pill and have it passed on my own at home, but said it could be quite painful with the cramping. Um, 
And then there was also the option to have surgery and have a DNC done. She also said that, you know, we didn't have to make a decision right then and there that it was okay to take some time to think about it, to not make any rash decisions, but I knew in that moment that I wanted to have the surgery. Um, passing the baby at home would have been really hard for me because I felt pregnant, I looked pregnant, and I would have constantly thought about the fact that there was my baby still inside me and that he wasn't alive. And that was hard enough to think about. So we chose to do the surgery. And the fact that my body went a month without recognizing the miscarriage, I felt like the surgery was right for me. So they got us in for the very next day. We went in. Uh, we were sad, you know, everyone that helped us was really, really sensitive and they knew what procedure I was having and why. And the nurse gave us a gift and said that there was a local church that made baby blankets and put together little gifts for all the miscarriage mamas. And they gave me that and I was not expecting it. Uh, Neither was my husband, so it definitely caught us off guard. We had some tears, but it was a beautiful present. And I actually, um, I went to Target and I picked up like this little, tiny little plastic box and I made a little um, keepsake box for him. Okay, so just covering my information, but this is the first ultrasound where we could actually see him. I was technically seven weeks, but he looked about six weeks. And then this is the ultrasound from when he passed away. Um, I was 11 weeks and he looked to be about seven. So this is the onesie that we got for him for our pictures. And it says, here comes the sun, for our sun. I know it's cheesy, but I love it. Um, I'm not gonna show you guys the name because we are keeping that private right now, but his name is on the other side of it. And I got this beautiful, beautiful necklace from a friend of mine and she had it mailed to us and, said, and it says, Planted on earth, blooming in heaven. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it anywhere I go. I carried you every second of your life, and I will love you every second of mine. And I was due in October, and my friend had his initial and an October flower on this necklace. So absolutely beautiful, and I like appreciate it so much. And then this is the little blanket that was made and given to us. It's so sweet. It's a little bigger than a washcloth, but absolutely so sweet. So now we have a little keepsake box for our baby number two. So back to my story. It just, things just didn't feel right. Um, I was super sick with my son, my first son, and with this pregnancy, I was hardly sick at all. I, you know, there were times where I was nauseous and I threw up a here and there, but it was not that bad compared to my first pregnancy. So my husband and I, um, we are processing the miscarriage. We are, we're sad. We know that we would have loved to meet our son. Um, it really, really hurt us to go through this but we're healing. We're taking it day by day. Um, we know that this happens and we do believe that everything happens for a reason. Um, just because this pregnancy didn't work out the way we had hoped doesn't mean that the next one won't. And even though we experienced this loss, um, we're not gonna stop trying. 
we are going to do it a little differently now. Um, just while we're healing, we know that whatever is meant to be is going to be. So if I fall pregnant, great. If I don't, then we're going to let my body take the time that it needs. And if my body decides that it's ready for another baby, then so be it. And if my body decides that it's not ready, then I'm going to give it all the time it needs. So that's the most I'm probably going to share with you guys about my journey of trying to conceive, just because that's not really what my content is about. And that is such a personal thing. So I did really want to make sure that I could share this journey with you of the miscarriage because I know that there's so many women out there who feel like they have to suffer in silence and that's not fair to you. If you're going through it and you have a hard time talking about it, that's okay. You heal the way that you need to and if you feel like you want to share, then you go for it. You have every right. You know, leave a comment here and tell your story. Um, even though it's a sad, a sad topic, it shouldn't be taboo. You know, we shouldn't be ashamed to talk about these things. I think that reading other people's stories when they lost their own babies helped me. It helped me know that I'm not alone. And I've heard on so many comments of my other posts that by sharing my story, it helped a lot of other women heal. And that's what drove me to make this video. And I apologize, I did not script this video. I did not even make any notes. I'm just kind of doing it as I, I'm just like, I'm just winging it. So um, I didn't even like do my makeup for this video. <laughs> I'm just like still kind of all over the place with myself and um, yeah, if you're going through this, I'm so sorry. There are no words that can take the pain away. And it's going to hurt for a while. I am doing better. Like, surprisingly better. Even just a week later. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. You know, I, I have reservations about getting pregnant again because I feel like I'm missing out on meeting this baby that I lost. But I know in my heart that I'm not replacing this baby. By getting pregnant again and trying for another child, it's another child. It's not replacing the one that we lost. He's always going to be with us and it gives me comfort knowing and believing that one day I'll meet him and that he'll be watching over us. And he'll watch over his older brother and future siblings. So they say that one in four pregnancies end in miscarriage. Um, I'm one of those women. It sucks. And I'm always going to remember this baby. I'm always going to feel them with me and I'm always going to have a fear of losing another baby and maybe I will maybe I won't it's just a, a bridge that I'll have to cross if I ever get there again if you've been through something similar um, whether it be miscarriage or infertility struggling to get pregnant whatever the case is um, feel free to tell your story in the comments you know I try to read every single one and I do my best to respond to as many as I can and as sad as these stories might be it is so helpful to talk about it and to get it off your chest instead of bottling it up I know that I struggle whenever I bottle something up and I need to talk about things to process them even though this isn't necessarily my normal content, um, I really hope that this video can help someone and make a difference for them because it really helped me to hear someone else's story. Bye for now.